All right, folks, I know that uh, this is being recorded. And so everything I'm saying, I'm also going to be putting into that chat, which is also part of the recording as well. And so do be mindful of time. We're going to get started. So welcome to the virtual college fair. Uh, a reminder for attendees that your microphone and your camera are off. So if you have any questions for our panelists, please use that Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen. You can ask any question to one institution or a blanket question. Just make sure you let them know who you're asking the question to. Um, you can sign up for more sessions in the same place that you signed up for this one. So we have a few sessions tonight and some more tomorrow. And again, a recording of this will be available. Uh, it'll be pushed out to anyone who registered and it's also on our website as well. And so to kick us off, we have Illinois Wesleyan University. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Starnes, and I am the Regional Admission Counselor for Illinois Wesleyan. Um, I know uh, really to appreciate the time um, to join us this afternoon to learn more about these great schools. And I can't wait to share a little bit over the next few minutes about what makes Illinois Wesleyan so special and actually how we've also been recently uh, named for the second year in a row top 10 job placement university among all schools in the nation and also called the hidden gem school of the midwest so we'll dive on in with illinois wesleyan we are a small um, liberal arts university about 1700 undergrads as our side we are an undergrad only school so there are no grad students so it's a great opportunity for graduate level research at the undergrad level since there's no competition on that size our average classroom size is 16 11 to 1 student teacher ratio so you're not going to see this um, the large lecture hall style class seating um, it's going to be a lot less lecture and more discussion so small very close um, classroom sizes for great conversations with your faculty and discussion with your peers. That's one of the beauties of contributing or looking at a small um, liberal arts university or a smaller school in general, just to try to give you a lot of undivided attention um, to get a lot of questions answered and to really go further into your learning. Now, Illinois Wesleyan is made up of three primary schools. Well, first, we have our School of Nursing, um, now with almost 20 years of 100% job placement. It is a direct admit nursing program. Um, with the College of Fine Arts, we're very known for the fine arts side, especially our School of Theater Arts, National Rank Musical Theater Program, um, and professional degrees in both our School of Art and Music and the BA tracks as well. So these are all great opportunities, audition-based and scholarship opportunities through that side. And then of course, our main college of liberal arts that contains the majority of our majors and minors at our institution. Um, we have everything from a popular pre-med program, uh, psychology, uh, physics, journalism, just all the traditional majors that you would think, but then even very popular majors that you would only expect to find at your larger institutions or tech schools down at the smaller scale liberal arts university. Now at Illinois Wesleyan, we take a lot of pride in our main diversity and we wanna to continue to grow our diversity as part of our initiative. Um, and our school um, agenda. Um, we thankfully have been able to do so um, steadily over the last several years. Um, now right at or above um, one out of every three students uh, being a student of color on our campus, um, do a lot of things from diving into our uh, pre-orientation programs designed uh, for students of color to be able to make sure that they have a voice and can fit into the campus um, and know where resources are. Um, to all kinds of different things going on for students of different socioeconomic backgrounds, our LGBTQ plus community, just a lot of ways that we want to make sure that we're taking care of all students of background, and make everyone feel uh, appreciated and welcomed at our school. Now, our campus life, over 120 different student organizations, so uh, many big and small, as you can imagine. Um, we do have Greek life, so we're sororities and fraternities with Rush, um, campus productions, uh, theatrical productions and so many different ways to get involved. Um, Bloomington itself is about 130,000 people. So it's a good sized college town. Um, and like I mentioned, that combination of our smaller school makes for an awesome um, learning experience. Now we are D3 NCAA for anyone that's interested in athletics. Um, students can get recruited um, or reach out to the coaching staff. Uh, we do have esports as well, so that is an opportunity for scholarship uh, dollars right there for anyone that's ever thought about wanting to try to compete for gaming in the collegiate level. 
And then our financial aid opportunity. I always tell everyone, don't be intimidated by the fact um, that we are a private university. Um, we don't have an out-of-state cost and we wanna make sure we're doing everything we can um, to help with the financial side. Um, so our average net cost after scholarships is typically around 28,000 a year and that is tuition, room and board and a meal plan. So that's everything included. 95% um, of our students are gonna get a merit scholarship uh, based on GPA and scores or test optional path. So our average coming in is a 375 GPA, 26 ACT, 1210 SAT. So if you're above those averages, not only are you in good shape for acceptance, but to get one of our higher end merit scholarships, whatever you get is renewable each year, your student at the school. So for next steps, uh, assuming we have uh, some juniors uh, that are tuning in, uh, rising senior status almost coming up on us real quick. Um, we do have two summer open houses that are designed for rising seniors that are really popular even for say sophomores to come and attend as well. Um, so uh, our application uh, will go live um, in August. We are on the Common App. Um, so we try to keep the process very simple, free application. Um, and again, we are test optional um, for students um, to be able to still get accepted and also have scholarship opportunities as well. Um, my contact information is in the top left, my phone or email. Uh, feel free to reach out any way you would like, and I'll be able to help you out through the process. We certainly hope you will be able to come up and visit the campus. Like I mentioned, we've got those summer open houses coming up, traditional fall open houses coming up as well, and we do campus visits daily. So plenty of time to be able to come up over the next year, check out the school, so that way we could give you a great tour I'm regionally based in the South, so I live in East Tennessee, so just right across the border. I love getting the chance uh, to talk with students uh, from the Carolinas, and I'm definitely looking forward to hopefully hearing from you soon. Thank you again uh, for tuning in. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have Pace University. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Bowler. Um, is everyone able to uh, see my screen? I assume you will are, so I'll get started. So Pace University, we are a private liberal arts college uh, located in New York. We have two campuses. Uh, our larger campus is in New York City, has about 7,000 undergraduate students located in the financial district, so right in between Wall Street and the Brooklyn Bridge, um, so really uh, in the center of the whole world. And then our Westchester campus north of New York City, uh, definitely the more traditional college campus, has about 2,700 students, uh, undergraduate students, home to our Division II athletics program, and definitely, again, the more traditional college campus. When you think of the general layout, uh, the quad, the dorms, uh, everything like that. In terms of academics, we have five schools and a law school. Uh, college of Health Professions is home to our health sciences and our nursing program. Our nursing program is only available on our Westchester campus, and it's a direct admit program. Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, we are a liberal arts college, so regardless of what major you choose, Every student completes about 40 to 50 credits within uh, Dyson over their four years. Uh, those are core requirements, so classes across English, math, history, one lab science, uh, computer science, and public speaking. Uh, the Elizabeth Hobbs School of Law is actually located on our third campus in White Plains, New York. We do like to mention it here um, just because uh, we do have a number of uh, accelerated programs. We have a three plus three uh, program for students who are interested in pursuing a law degree, uh, but about 40 combined degree programs overall. Uh, Lubin School of Business. Uh, Given our location, tremendous opportunities uh, to study uh, business, accounting, finance, marketing, international business, uh, a number of, of different options there. Uh, every uh, school of business student takes a core set of business classes. So that really gives them the opportunity to come in business undecided, um, double major, major and minor. Um, so really advantageous for our students. Uh, School of Education, we offer pre-childhood, childhood, adolescent, and childhood adolescent education. Really strong uh, uh, networking uh, relationships with schools throughout New York City, up into Westchester, out onto Long Island, everything like that. Uh, I will say uh, the New York State certification process is one of the toughest in the country. So even if you don't plan on staying in New York after graduation, we do see that certification transfer very easily from one state to another. Last but not least, the Seidenberg School of Computer Science. I always say our smallest school on both campuses, but our highest earners right after graduation. Uh, we have two computer science programs, a BS and a BA, as well as an information systems program and an information technology program. 
we always like to say that every student uh, at PACE is different. So we've created what we call the PACE path. Um, this just gives you an, an idea of what your PACE path might look like. Research uh, experiences, global study, volunteer opportunities, uh, but really emphasis on that uh, hands-on real world experience. Um, the average class size at PACE is about 20 students. Student to faculty ratio is about 16 to one. So it's a very active uh, uh, style of learning. Uh, about 90% of our undergraduates are employed or continuing their graduation uh, as soon as six months after graduation. In terms of applying to PACE, pretty straightforward uh, requirements. Uh, we are on the Common App. That's probably the easiest way to submit your application. Then from your high school or high schools, your official transcript. So that's uh, official grades, uh, freshman through uh, junior year. Uh, senior year grades are useful, but they're not required unless we uh, request them. Letters of recommendation, we uh, request two, typically one from your guidance counselor and another uh, from uh, an additional teacher. Um, and then we are test optional in terms of the SAT and the ACT. Some important deadlines for you to consider. Each year, FAFSA opens up on October 1st. If you haven't already, definitely go on. You can create your account uh, before FAFSA opens up. Uh, for uh, fall 23. So I encourage you to do that. Then we offer early decision, uh, two rounds of early action uh, each year and a regular decision deadline on February 15th. Want to highlight uh, the December 15th uh, performing arts uh, deadline. That is a unique uh, deadline because of the pre-screen and audition process uh, for performing arts students. In addition to our merit scholarships, about 97% uh, of our students receive financial aid. The average package of a financial aid uh, for financial aid of a student is about $26,000. So similar to what was being said earlier, I always say don't let this price tag of a school like Pace scare you away because considering our merit scholarships and our financial aid, uh, the numbers that you see on the website really aren't reflective of what any of our students uh, pay. And then lastly, uh, just my contact information, I'll put it in the chat as well, um, but definitely reach out to me. I'm the North and South Carolina uh, admissions representative, so happy to uh, talk about PACE with you further. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Virginia Military Institute. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacy McCoy. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions counselors here at VMI. Um, I will be sharing my screen so you all can take a look um, at my PowerPoint. And I will also be going over some information for you all. Um, what makes VMI unique is the fact that we are a 24-7 military institute. Um, everyone here lives in the barracks. Uh, you form up together. You do everything as a military process. Um, we like for our students here to commission, but that is optional. Um, we do have um, the, uh, our graduation rate, um, as far as if you do not commission into the military, is one of top notch. Um, just being with our alumni here at VMI, your rate of obtaining a job within six months ranks up in the 90 percentile ratings. Um, we also like to let people know that um, our faculty and staff here are small in number. We like for our professors to get really in depth with our students. Um, they also represent um, you as your mentor teacher and as a counselor. Um, it is required that uh, your professors meet with you twice a semester to make sure that you are on uh, the same route as far as graduation and what you are trying to obtain as far as graduation. Um, you will see that there are things that are required as far as the application process. We too are test optional. However, if you plan on um, going into the ROTC program, you do have to submit scores for that. Um, again, what makes 
um, Virginia military different from other colleges is the fact that we are a 24 seven military institute. Um, we like to tell students the hardest thing here at VMI is your time management. Uh, so we like for students to uh, be very well-rounded, um, be able to balance the uh, academic life as well as what that would look like if you were um, taking basic training for any of the branches of the military. Um, we also like for families to know that here in Lexington, Virginia, we are a small community and we do take care of each other. Um, what happens here, um, families are considered host families. So when we know uh, students need that break on the weekend, your host family can um, sign you out on a Sunday. Um, that's your day to, to try to um, recruit and rebalance and to get yourself back in for what is to come the following Monday. Um, we like for everyone to know here at VMI, we are unique. Um, we like for kids to know exactly what you're going to be getting yourself into once you get here at Virginia Military Institute. Um, Top-notch school as far as academics. Uh, we are also participate in the NCAA Division I athletes as far as men's and women's competitions, and we also host a number of club activities as well. So um, just look for us or and join us on uh, Inside VMI. Again, my name is Stacy McCoy. Um, you can get in touch with me through that app and or call the VMI Office of Admissions. I look forward to um, hearing from you all. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Randolph College. Hello, hello. One second to share my screen. And, oh, hello, you guys. Oh, okay, looks like I'm having an issue with my PowerPoint. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I will, Whoa. sorry, you guys, it looks like I won't be able to share my PowerPoint. So I will just speak on Randolph College and what, uh, what our strengths are, and what we are known for. First off, we're located in Lynchburg, Virginia, um, where, uh, or what we call Central Virginia. We are a liberal arts college founded in um, 1893, um, we are big on diversity. So um, uh, first off, we have a minority rate of 40%. Um, where our students uh, come from are currently 35 different states and 13 different countries. So we are big on diversity. Our classroom setting is very engaging. Um, so you're asked to kind of engage with your peers and professors on a daily basis. Um, so with that, uh, we hope that the diversity comes and kicks in and makes the, that student experience all that much more lively. Um, the average class size for us is about 12. So students are, like I said, very hands on with their professors inside and outside of the classroom. Um, and, and that goes a long way. Um, and it even extends out to our research projects. Um, and internships. So our students are getting out and getting involved, um, getting outside of the school in that sense too, and professors are helping them connect um, and network in those ways as much as possible. Now, um, another thing that is big with us, um, as again, and it's kind of connecting to what I just said with that student experience. Everyone at Randolph, uh, or excuse me, there are no two students that have the exact same uh, path at when they get to Randolph. So with that being said, even if you're going into the same major as someone else, you guys won't have the exact same path. Everything is tailor made to the student. So you sit down, you meet with your academic advisor um, based at least one time per seven weeks. Um, and you sit down and go over what we call a Randolph plan. And there you're plugging in courses based on interest, um, based on your likes, your dislikes, your strengths and things like that. Um, and as each time you meet with them, you have the, what your Randolph plan in front of them and you're able to kind of elaborate and figure out, OK, what it is you need to do next, um, what 
you know, what might be the next steps, what courses may be next, could you minor in something, how many credits you've earned, how many credits you have left. So that's always key. And again, you sit down with your academic advisor the minute you step foot on campus. The only time you change your ac academic advisor is when you declare a major. Um, so that is important to know that we help students keep uh, track of everything that they're doing. Now, another big thing is for us, uh, student involvement. So a lot of our students are involved um, in clubs, sports, um, in the arts. We are big on all three of those. Um, so arts ranging from dance, theater, music, um, and oh, excuse, should I say like studio arts and things like that, painting, um, drawing, anything like that. We are connected with the art gallery in London. Um, so our students are, are actually getting firsthand experience via internships, study abroad. Um, and then actually we have our own museum on our campus. Um, which will have display Monday through Saturday. Um, we've had students get artwork bought out of our own museum. So again, if you are into the arts, that goes a long way because again, um, we're helping you get your, your, your work and your portfolios and things like that out there and involved. But again, I mentioned the study, study abroad. So our students will have opportunities to study abroad um, and they and they are basically endless opportunities, whether it's a full length year, semester long, um, a two week program over the summer, whether it's a spring break trip, it can be individual in a group, things like that. But students have gone uh, just about everywhere, China, England, Ireland, Costa Rica, um, Honduras, all over the student experience. Again, if you if you feel like there's somewhere you want to go out to, uh, we have our office on on campus where students can go and they talk about it and find out what's feasible for each student. Um, the biggest thing and the newest thing with Randolph College is our take two. So our students are taking two classes at a time for seven week periods. So you're meeting three to four times a week. You're guaranteed off a of class on Wednesdays. Um, and you're meeting, like I said, with those courses a little more consistently than what your typical college class uh, structure may look like. Um, but you're still earning enough credits to graduate on time. Like I said, you go through a seven week period, you take two courses, you earn four credits for each class, then you move on after exam period to the next uh, seven weeks with your two courses. So you're still getting 16 credits, um, the standard 16 credits per semester, basically just broken down into seven week time frames. So far, it's, uh, it's actually, this is our first year with it and it's been pretty good for our students up to this point, uh, making a lot of headway. Um, and students are able to kind of focus, crack down, um, and again, retain that information a little better. So that is pretty big for us here on campus. Our, uh, again, I mentioned sports earlier. Our students are involved. We play in the ODAC, um, Old Dominion Athletic Conference, um, where we have a, no, a number of sports ranging from basketball, tennis, track, cross, cross country, uh, volleyball, softball, lacrosse, swimming, and eSports is also a team of ours. So if you're competitive and you love it, the, the student athlete balance, I think Randolph will present a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for you there as well. Um, and then moving to our clubs, our students, uh, we have about 39 clubs on campus um, and students uh, can actually create their own club. So if there's something you feel like, you know, oh, th th we need to have this on campus and you have enough um, backing from your peers, you can jump out and get involved with that as well. Um, so again, Randolph is a place we want you to get out and explore, learn more about yourself as a student um, person and connect with your professors. Um, many different opportunities there. Um, the biggest thing with our admissions process um, typically takes us two weeks to get a decision back out to students. All we require are your, obviously your application and your transcripts. Now we are on Common App, but we do have our own app free of charge on our website. Um, and again, once we get that and your transcripts um, into us, about a two week turnaround to get that decision back out to you. The biggest thing, fill out your FAFSA, 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 FAFSA. I can't say it enough. Get that FAFSA information in as soon as possible. And then we're able to help families figure out, okay, how much can you afford? How much, you know, what can we do to help you out as a family and make the school as affordable as possible? Um, so again, get that FAFSA in, um, talk to your admissions counselor. Uh, I myself uh, am the counselor for North Carolina, South Carolina. Georgia and Florida. So if you are um, from those areas, I would definitely see your app first, but ask as many questions as you possibly can. Um, and we would love to help you out. Our FAFSA code is 003734. So please, please, please ask as many questions as possible. Again, get that FAFSA in. Um, 
yeah, and just have fun with this experience. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Lynchburg. Hello, everybody. My name is Cameron Morris. I am the admissions counselor at the University of Lynchburg. My territories are the Tywood area of Virginia, all Southern states, including um, Texas and California as well. So if you give me one second so I can share my screen. So welcome to the University of Lynchburg. So um, the University of Lynchburg is known as a college that changes lives. We were founded in 1903. Um, we are located in Lynchburg, Virginia, um, also known as Central Virginia. This is a family oriented campus. Everyone that is a student, faculty, or staff member has always been a part of a big family here at the University of Lynchburg. That is our purpose, and that's what we strive for. So the average class size that we have here at the University of Lynchburg is about 16. So you'll have that intimate um, class size. You'll have the connection with your professors that can help you academically throughout your college career. Um, we have about 2,000 undergraduate students and 1,000 graduates. And our student faculty ratio is about 10 to 1. So like I said before, you'll have that intimate connection with your um, professor in each one of your classes. So we have over 100 majors and minors pre-professional programs here at the university, which gives us an opportunity to dig deep into possibly their specific career path. Um, and our top majors that we have here at the university include nursing, business, um, criminology, psychology, and health sciences. And we have 15 pre-professional programs, including pre-physical therapy, pre-veterinary sciences, as well as um, a lot of pre-nursing, pre-physician assistants. And about 91% of our student population is absolutely satisfied with the academic um, experience that they have here at the university. So the University of Lynchburg just implemented an extraordinary program, um, DAP also known as Direct Admit Pathway. Basically what this pathway is, it allows incoming first year students to have the opportunity to possibly um, have interest in a graduate program that we offer here at the university. And they will talk to their admissions counselor. We will connect them with the faculty and staff members, set up an interview, and they can possibly be admitted or on the path of being admitted into graduate school before even starting their undergraduate degree, which is very, very um, successful and very amazing to have here at the university. And we are the only university that offers a pathway to an MBA in sports management here at the university. So um, just to talk about criminology program, about all the cool things that it has to offer, the criminology um, program actually allows students to research on fingerprinting as well as practice surveillance tactics. Um, one cool thing that they have is a crime scene that they set up on a Dell. So criminology students do have the opportunity to see what an actual crime scene will usually look like when they go into this field, which is very, very cool. A lot of our criminology students absolutely love this opportunity that they have on campus because it gives you that hands-on um, experience with the equipment. So, the University of Lynchburg um, Health Science Programs. You can participate in a lot of research projects. It can be individual or it can be um, faculty, a faculty member can assist you with that. And it can also help you prepare for your um, specific career path um, post-graduation. In addition, we do have cadaver labs here at the university. So the student will have the opportunity if they are a health science major, to have the opportunity to work with a cadaver. We also have a digital cadaver as well. So um, we do have options there, but we do offer a cadaver lab. So when it comes to our business students, our business students actually have the opportunity to have experience in stocks. Um, our business program actually has a classroom that shows all the stocks, all of the increases and decreases, which gives you the hands-on opportunity, gives you a sneak peek of what a career um, in this field would entitled and have. So that is something that a lot of students like to take advantage of in our business and administration majors. So if you are interested in that, this is a possible opportunity that you can have to work with actual stocks while being an undergraduate student. So another principle is that we have is high impact learning. 
which helps you take your academic um, experience to another level. So what does that mean? With internships that we have in the university, so you have a lot of opportunities, a lot of options when it comes to internships. A lot of our students um, go to our career and professionalism center um, to get an internship, but if you already have a specific business or organization that you would like to work with, the Career and Professionalism Center here can actually help you get that connection. You have various students who intern at the organizations and businesses that they currently work at post-graduation. So we get you an extra foot in the door, an extra experience that you would like to have. For a prime example, some students have actually worked with CDC during the vaccinations um, while being a health science major, which is very, very phenomenal. So you do have the opportunity of seeing what your future career can look like. So we do offer study abroad here. Not only do we offer it during your spring and fall semesters, but you can also go on a study abroad trip during your breaks. We do have scholarships and financial aid available um, for our students. And if you would like to replace one of your college courses, there are study abroad trips that offer for foreign languages, possibly in English that you can um, go on a study abroad trip and receive the credit for that course by going on a study abroad trip, which is very, very cool to have. So more than half of our students do research with their faculty professor, which is very amazing. So if you are interested in a specific topic, you do have the opportunity to do research on it and present it at our student showcase um, that we have every spring semester. So we do give students the opportunity to dig deeper into their interests and into subjects that, that spark a fire and present it to the university and possibly present it to other organizations of what the findings were. So our classrooms are not just lecture and tests. You have the opportunity to have classroom within everywhere you go. So for prime example, sometimes you may have class outside. Sometimes you may have class at another facility. So it's always something new with the class. We keep it fresh and we absolutely love the exploratory um, setting that our classrooms do provide. So um, just to give an example, um, we're going to talk about some of the alumni and what they're currently doing now after graduating um, with a degree from the University of Lynchburg. So this is Landon Hammerly. Landon is a professional gamer and his Call of Duty team has more than 810,000 subscribers on YouTube after graduating from the University of Lynchburg. Another um, notable alumni is um, Ms. Nat Ladon, she graduated in 2018. She is now a full-time photographer with Duke, Ac Duke Athletics. So that is phenomenal. You do have the opportunity to be a photographer here on the campus um, at the University of Lynchburg. We do have a photography class um, if, you, if you are interested in participating in that. Another will be Jamar Hawkins, who graduated in 2004. He is a senior policy coordinator with the Department of Health and Human Services and ser serves as our Lynchburg Alumni Board Chair. This is Emily Brown, who graduated in 2002. She has mentored several communication students in the senior manager at USA Today. This is Francesca Vanquez. Um, she had a passion for technology, started through playing video games. Now she's the vice president of technology at Amazon Web Services. And we are not, not only are we about your academics, but we also love our students to have a great experience outside the classroom. We have over 70 clubs and organizations here at the university. And if you do not find what they interest you, you can create your own. We love seeing students' creativity flourish here at the university and how they implement their interests into their college experience. So whatever ideas that you have as a student, maybe you wanna start an organization that you feel can be an asset to the campus, feel free to join it. We are more than happy to listen to your ideas and implement it into the college. So we are big on academic um, athletics. So we are division three in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. We have uh, 24 intercollegiate um, teams as well as club and we have intramural sports as well. So we do offer athletics and the athletic games are a highlighting event each and every year. We have co-red games during ODEC um, games as well. So 
when you come to a game, you're probably gonna see a lot of students in red shirts on the track supporting the teams um, at Lynchburg. And last year, we actually won eight ODAC championships. So we are also super excited and proud of that as well. So we also have an outdoor leadership program. So if you're interested in maybe hiking, maybe caving, or anything of that sort, you do have the opportunity to um, go on a trip with um, our outdoor leadership program. So what are the next steps? You um, can visit campus, we offer virtual and in person. Then you'll apply, you can talk to your admissions counselor, and then you'll be admitted um, and you will receive a merit scholarship. We give all of our admitted students a merit scholarship between 15 to $21,000, um, and it's solely based on your high school GPA. And like I said, we are a college that changes lives. So come and visit us. And if you have any questions, please not hesitate to reach out to your um, admissions counselor. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so that wraps up our six minute presentations by each of the institutions. So if I could have everyone's camera on, we're just gonna do a quick question. Um, and I'm gonna share my screen here really quickly, maybe. All right, um, okay, starting um, at the top. Uh, what is a piece of advice that you would give someone going through the college search process? Well, I would say um, definitely get to know um, your admission counselor. Uh, we truly want to be here to help make your life a lot easier, um, especially once you start getting into senior year. Obviously got a lot of things going on. Um, so whether it be, um, you know, related to admissions or next steps, or especially if you're considering a smaller university, since a lot of us work across the board, you know, financial aid orientation, things like that. Uh, we want to be able to be here and help be a great resource. If you haven't found out who your admission counselor is at your school, um, try to research that or at least just start with the general admission office. So that way you can stay in touch with us and we'll try to make your life a little bit easier. Sort of going off that, I always encourage students to consider as many different kinds of colleges as they can, location-wise, size-wise, liberal arts, non-liberal arts, um, public, private, um, really get out there and explore all the different opportunities. Um, you may come to a, you may visit a school like Pace in the middle of New York City, say, I love this place, or absolutely not, I want to go somewhere more suburban, more rural, um, but um, really consider as many different um, schools as you can. Um, and again, take advantage of your guidance counselors, uh, knowledge as well as your uh, admissions counselor's knowledge. Hello, I'm Stacy with BMI. Um, I would say that um, you need to start the process early, uh, do your research, uh, apply for financial aid, uh, make sure you research and find all and every scholarship that is out there that you possibly could find and just to understand the process and don't be afraid to ask questions. Hey, uh, Corey Brown from Randolph College. Um, basically what all, everybody has said so far, um, and again, um, make sure you're asking the questions. Make sure you find out who your counselor is. Ask, 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 ask as many questions as possible. This is a big decision for you. So um, as someone said earlier that we want to help you figure out this decision as much as possible. Um, I would say the uh, big thing is get out and visit those schools. Um, research them on your own and then follow up with questions uh, with your counselors. But again, go make sure you step foot on those campuses um, that you're interested in the most or and even the ones that you might not necessarily think you're interested in. Um, visit those because you never know. You might get to a campus and the whole energy changes for you. So visit visit those schools. I agree with what everyone is saying. Um, one thing I will say is visit the school, see what you're interested in what you're comfortable with um, because when you build up what your interests are, it can help the college process a little bit easier um, that will suit what you would like with the qualities that you're interested in. Maybe you wanna to go to a public university, maybe private. Um, also look at the area that the colleges are located um, because that can help a lot because not only are you looking for a college where you can do stuff on campus, but also off campus can be very important too um, when it comes to looking for colleges because this is going to be your home for the next four years. So 
you want to know everything not only about the college but also the surrounding areas because that can be a big contributor to um, choosing a university. I think everything that you you folks said is spot on. Um, my last plug is just to make sure that uh, folks reach out to you folks, uh, the experts. I mean, really your job is to make sure they find the right fit for them. Uh, and so whether you're unsure or you have a few questions, don't hesitate to reach out to these people. They are the experts. This is what they do. They, they wanna make sure that you can find the right fit for you. Um, as you folks leave here, you'll see a five question survey uh, that we ask you to take. Uh, aside from our sessions, we have more tonight, but we also have more tomorrow and recording of this and all of our sessions are available on our website and will be pushed out to uh, registrants and of course to our, our hosts here and our panelists. Thank you again to our experts. Thank you for presenting your institutions. Um, appreciate it so, so much and good luck to the students, to the parents um, finding the place that is right for you. With that said, I hope you all have a fantastic evening.